That day, there was a wedding in Kocho Village Chief Ahmad Jaso's house. His nephew, Benyan, and his beautiful bride, Najma, did not know that this celebration would be one of their last good memories from Kocho. Their traditional wedding dance had a different outcome. We'll return to that dance later. A few months passed when gunshots rang out in the village. It was two in the morning. 19-year-old Bazi was scared. After three days of shooting, ISIS militants came to village chief Jasso and demanded that everyone convert to Islam. Residents were given only a few days to consider their options. Thousands fled the village in fear, headed to nearby mountains. On the 15th of August, Bazi's family received a call from her brother. He wanted them all to come quickly to school. He said everyone was there. Within moments, several armored car full of ISIS militants arrived. They separated everybody into groups. Girls, boys, unmarried women, and elderly women. Baji said, they laid blankets on the floor and asked us to put our phones there. Then they asked us to put our jewelry and then money on it. The militants divided women from men, the old from the young. Bazi said they kept us separated. A Yazidi mother later recounted that the other women were whisked away. Then she heard the sound of gunfire. All the captives started shouting and crying in panic. One militant came out with a sword in hand. A woman asked where the older women were. He answered, we executed them all. Some were beheaded. Bazi saw Nadia, Bushra, Noura, and hundreds of other girls that she knew. It brought back memories of the old school days. This was the same school where she had studied with Nadia from the third grade. When the girls were not in class, they used to play together with their dolls. Bazi heard a pickup truck and was quickly brought back to the present. From the window, she saw ISIS militants taking away some men, including Ahmed Jasso, the village chief. Then she heard a scream. The girls heard continuous sounds of gunfire. Nadia was on the second floor. She saw ISIS militants take away some men and shoot them dead, including six of her brothers. Bazi's mother left her young nephew with Bazi when she was taken away. Bazi's mother was never seen alive again. As the ISIS men came for Bazi, Nadia, and the other girls, Bazi pointed to her nephew, saying he was her son. At first, they isolated her with the other girls, but then one man ordered Bazi and her nephew to stay with the women. Bazi felt lucky for a while because Nadia and hundreds of Kocho girls were taken away in buses that night. ISIS men took them to Mosul. I am a survivor of the Yazidi genocide, now a refugee. I was a villager. Nadia later testified at the United Nations about what she witnessed that day. She said, ISIS militants rounded up all the men and killed more than 700 in one day. They separated 80 elderly women from them and killed them in Solak. Her mother was among them. Little boys were taken to training sites. She told world leaders at the UN that ISIS men humiliated the women and children they abducted. They touched and violated them. The building in Mosul, where Nadia and more than 150 other Yazidi families were brought, was already full with thousands of other Yazidi families who were exchanged as gifts. One of the captors wanted to take Nadia, but she was unwilling to go with the huge man. He hit, kicked, and beat her. A few minutes later, another man came up to her. He was smaller. She begged him to take her instead. He asked her to change her religion. She refused. Then he asked her to marry him. 
She put him off, saying she was ill. Most women, including Nadia, were menstruating then. A few days later, he forced Nadia to get dressed and put on makeup. That night, he raped her. She tried to flee, but guards caught her. That night, he beat her and told her to take her clothes off. He put Nadia in a room with other guards and they raped her until she fainted. The girls knew they were going to be sold as sex slaves. Often, they refused to bathe so they would be less attractive to potential buyers. A documentary, The 74th Command Kocho, illustrates some of these transactions. We have excerpts. How much would you buy for her? For a gun, the price depends. If she has blue eyes, it will be different. $500. Today is the female sex slaves market day. A Yazidi girl. Will he take two? Do you have a share or not yet? I and Farouk have none. You want one Yazidi girl? A sex slave? Yes. Can you handle her? If she is 15 years old, I have to turn her around and check her teeth. Why would I need her if she had no teeth? Then shoot her. Bazi's presence of mind could only help her for a little time. Then they took her to Tel Afar with 20 other girls. Bazi recalls she was also taken to Raqqa in Syria with her three-year-old nephew. She was sold in Aleppo. She tried to escape twice. The first time, she ran out of her owner's house and knocked on a door in Aleppo. A woman came out and Bazi told her story, begging for help. The woman called her husband and asked Bozzi to wait inside her house till her husband got home. The husband turned out to be an ISIS supporter. He brought the man from whom Bozzi had just escaped. She was beaten and raped again and again. The New York Post writes about the fate of another girl. Lamia Bashar tried to flee four times before finally escaping in March. A landmine exploded. The explosion left Lamia blind in her right eye, her face scarred by melted skin. Even with one eye, she counts herself among the lucky ones. She worries about her nine-year-old sister, Mayada, who remains captive. One photo she managed to send to the family shows the little girl standing in front of an IS flag. A Toronto-based website, McLean's, did a story on a few other girls. A 14-year-old Yazidi girl, Amira Hussein, has a tattoo on her left forearm that reads, Bring Back My People. She wears a medallion around her neck with a photo of her missing older brother, so he will always be close to me. One day, 15-year-old Bushra and other girls were asked to take a shower. They knew what was coming. One girl slit her wrist and bled to death on the shower floor. Bushra said she has told her story many times. That's all she can do. A global nonprofit media company, PRI, writes of another girl, Jeanne. She waited until Friday afternoon when all the men were at the mosque for prayers. Then she covered her face and hair with a black veil and slipped out through an unlocked door. Nadia, Bazi, and a few others either escaped by themselves or were unknowingly sold to rescuers. They survived. Tragedies are happening every day, though. Nazreen suffered three years of ISIS captivity and abuse, only to be killed by an airstrike just a day before the liberation of Mosul on July 9th. Bazi had seen Nazreen dancing at Benyon and Najma's wedding. Bazi told us that she and other girls danced that day. She said the groom, Binyan Jasso, was not in Kocho when ISIS militants came to the village, so he escaped death. The bride, Najma, was kidnapped with the other girls on the 15th of August. She delivered a baby girl in ISIS captivity. Several months ago, she called her family and said she was somewhere in the Syrian town of Raqqa. After that, no one heard from her again.